for this brand new year, I thought I would start off by looking back at my last year of wedding photography. I looked through all the weddings that I shot and I pulled out some of my favorite photos from last year. And I'm gonna walk you through how I shot those photos, the settings that I used, and kind of tell you a little bit behind the scenes of what happened while I was shooting. So welcome back to another video. If you are new to the channel, my name is Luke Cleland. I'm a wedding photographer here in beautiful Toronto, Canada, and I love talking about wedding photography, photography gear, uh, film photography, but also like I'm very much an artist at heart and I love trying to combine being an artist with being a photographer and being a business owner and all those things. Um, so if you're interested in those things, you want to learn more about that, you should totally subscribe. And thank you so much to so many of you that have subscribed recently. Um, I'm very excited about what is what this year is going to look like. And if you've noticed already, there's been an uptick in videos. I've been figuring out a way of how to provide you guys with more content. So let's get into it. I pulled 12 images from this year. And the first one is a flat lay. If you're not too familiar with wedding photography, a flat lay is kind of where you take the stationery, sometimes their details, the bride's details, you put them together with the florals that they had for that day and you take a photo. The crazy thing about being a wedding photographer is that there's always limited amount of time, right? You only have so much time to, for example, shoot these details. You can't just sit there forever and like move petals around one by one. Uh, like you can, but then you're gonna use up all your time. And so one thing that was kind of notable is that the colors of the florals were kind of different. They're a little bit more unique than what you always see. And when I first got them, I was like, wow, these are beautiful. And then as we were, Ali and I were styling this, and as we were kind of like laying out the board, I was getting nervous because it was, it was difficult. And to be honest, I was kind of stressed the whole time shooting it because it didn't feel like I was like getting to what I wanted it to be. You know, when I look at this photo now, I love it and I'm very excited. But in the moment, it's very easy just to be second guessing yourself. Also, I'm really sorry if that there's a beeping sound that you can hear. They are constructing a condo across the street from us and I just can't avoid beeping and construction sounds all day. So I'm sorry, but okay, back to the photo. So, um, but in the moment, I really wanted to kind of push the boundaries. I wanted to change, do things a little differently. And often when you do something like that, you feel a little nervous. And <laughs> just to kind of give you a little like peek about what it feels like as a photographer to shoot something that seems a little different. Like, you know, I've never shot with flowers in an envelope. It seemed kind of different and weird. And in the moment I was like, this is a good idea, right? I even shot like a backup shot with something different that wasn't so wild seeming. Um, but really this, I just wanted to like remind you and remind myself that like try things, like push the envelope. And sometimes you don't even fully realize and appreciate it until you get home and you look at it later and you're like, wow, I'm so glad I did that. Next is the like get the vibe photo. Um, this is a this is a type of photo that I really love taking at receptions and cocktail hours. I always look for kind of a high spot in the reception. Sometimes I'm standing on something. Sometimes I'm like getting up on a wall to shoot it. But it's kind of this high slice of a crowd where it really helps you feel kind of the vibe of what's going on. OK, yes, it's like totally beautiful. But a little thing that is behind the scenes, I actually use this photo in a Photoshop tutorial that I did recently. Um, but one of the reasons why I love this photo now is that I spent the time in taking out, if you like behind this cake here, there's actually like this metal pole. And it didn't take too much time, but it was like a world of difference to just take out that big imperfection down the middle. If you haven't noticed this already, there is a trend in the type of lenses that I use. I just use one. Like these are all pretty different photos that you've seen so far, but I am regularly shooting on my 50 millimeter. I've talked about this a lot. Um, I have a video all about the lens that I use, but there is incredible variety that you can get from just using 
one single lens, keeping it really simple. Um, if you look at this next photo, this is oh, one of my favorite kind of like cheers details from this last year. And um, I don't know, you like it's kind of surprising that all of these photos are taken on the same lens. That's what I think. For this photo, uh, this, yes, you look at it, you're like, oh, wow, it's like perfectly, there's like one of each different type of drink. Something like this doesn't happen accidentally. Like typically at a reception, I'm looking to shoot for something like this. And what I'll often do is, yes, look at all the drinks, see if there's a table that has a, a few varieties of different drinks. And I sit and I wait. If I find a table that has like a perfect little line of drinks and, you know, people, they got some nice hands and stuff like that, I will sit like a little creeper in the corner and I will just wait for a cheers or, you know, throughout speeches, I'll always go back to that one table to see, oh, do they have a good moment here? Uh, and then capture this. So I think, you know, a key to wedding photography, a key to some of my favorite photos that I'm going to show you is that combination between uh, a moment happening at a wedding and some pre-planning ahead of time where you have a little bit of an idea of what you're looking for, what you want to shoot, and then you combine that with what kind of organically happens at a wedding. And I think you get some beautiful images. So this photo is shot on Portra 400 on my contacts and a full environmental shot. It's so important, but so many photographers miss it. A little tip for you is that I always think about shooting the environment first and then do the rest of the event of what's going on. So for example, on a wedding day, we came out to shoot in this courtyard. What am I thinking? I'm thinking, ooh, I need a full environment shot. And that's where I got this beautiful image um, of a couple coming out of these doors in a building downtown here in Toronto. Um, it's very easy in wedding photography to be kind of focused in on the action and to forget about what is really beautifully going on around that's maybe not necessarily tied to the action. It's not so necessarily tied to what the couple's specifically doing. But if you just take a step back, quite literally, I had to take many steps back. I was just like, hustling my way right across here as they were slowly coming out. I said, you know, take your time on your way out. And I was like hustling across here to get here in time so I could shoot it, them just naturally walking out. And they weren't even re kind of realizing or thinking about what I was doing. This has got to be one of my favorite kind of groom entrances photos of all time. It's not often that a groom does come down the aisle. I have seen it a few times, but often they kind of just slip in the side. Um, but the combination of the groom coming down the aisle uh, before kind of the brides and the bridesmaids came down and the beauty of this little chapel and the colors and the arch and the paint. Ah, it's so good. And I love it so much. And this photo could have been horribly destroyed and wrecked if there was a DJ sitting on the left side of these stairs. So, oh my goodness. So when I first showed up here, there was a person setting up audio and they were totally doing their job. They weren't doing anything wrong. And they, he just set up in the best place that he thought, you know, whatever. And I got there and I got there not too much in advance of the actual ceremony beginning. And the first thing that I thought and the first thing that I saw was like, that guy has got to move. Like he's not super in the way, but the whole left side of the stairs, the whole behind, there's like one guest there at the end. He would have just been like there and really hard to miss. And to be honest, very hard to Photoshop. Um, and so I just like went up to him very kindly and I was like, I am so sorry that I wasn't here earlier, but is there any possibility that we could hide you a little bit more and move you right to the end? And honestly, I kind of second guess like, oh, do I want to be that person? It's kind of like annoying. Um, but I just went to him and asked him really kindly to move. And that was a huge like impact to taking this photo. And so, you know, as a photographer, you're the only one that's going to do something like that. Like you have the eye, you're going to see if something's in the way or not. And so like, yes, there's a balance of being kind of like that jerk where you're like asking always like people to move and do this all the time. I think that can be annoying if you go overboard. 
But there are times like this scenario where I am so, so glad that I asked them to move because I love this photo so much. Um, if you notice, I, I like shooting at ISO 400 a lot. Um, and so typically, yeah, I try to keep my settings on the lower side so that quality and the color is rich. Um, and it also really helps me in shadows. Because I'm shooting on Nikon, there's so much latitude in the shadows. You can really pull up so much out of the shadows. And so I like to give my photos a lot of information. So this is a good combination of kind of what I talked about in those Cheers photos is combining things that are naturally happening with you know wanting to get specific photos. Um, when I first got to the venue and walked around, I, I looked at these stairs and I was like, oof, I need a bride walking through here. I, I need her to walk through here. And she was going to walk through here, but I was like, I want to be ready for this photo. So while she was finishing getting ready and she was about to leave and come downstairs, I came out here ahead of time and made sure all my settings were perfect. I made sure that the lighting was perfect. I like turned off a couple lights so it wasn't too yellow. I did a few, you know, I moved some pillows back in that window because I didn't really like what they looked like. And so I was fully prepared ahead of time so that I really hate stopping my couples in the middle of real movements. So I'm a big believer in letting things happen naturally on a wedding day. I don't do a ton of posing and like, oh, stop, 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 stop. Let me like fix this whole thing before we take this photo. I hate that because it wrecks the vibe of an actual wedding day. And so I wanted her to walk past me and go down the stairs and never know that this photo was taken. This is same bride, different dress, different time of the wedding day, but this was the client's idea. Um, I know as photographers, it can be easy to be like, I don't want any of your ideas. Like, I don't want like, I don't want you to tell me what to do. But this is a scenario, one of my favorite like reception photos from this past year, where the couple had these glasses for everybody at the reception. And they were like, oh, I'd love to have a photo together. And when they said that, I was like, ooh, I have the perfect spot. I have like the perfect idea. And this is the same bench, that same, let's go back. If you can see it, they're gonna sit in this little window. All of the photos that I have shown you up to this point are all shot natural light, one lens, nothing fancy, just the settings and what's going on around me. This is the first time and the only photo from this uh, video that I'm using a flash. I had my V1, which I've done a video about, and I had it a radio trigger. So it wasn't directly on top of my camera. What I did instead, you can actually see, you can actually see a little bit of my arm in the window reflecting. But what I did was I held this flash up to my left and kind of pointed down because I wanted to make sure that she had like her face had really clean coverage of flash and that there wasn't any weird kind of shadows. And since she her face was kind of pointing up, I had her, the flash kind of directly um, aimed at her face. And so love this photo. This photo is not actually from a wedding but it is from a, a branding shoot that we did with a wedding florist that we shoot weddings with. Something that I really, I think about every time that I look at this photo is the importance of lighting, is the importance of knowing how light hits things and impacts things at certain times of the day. So the cool thing about this shoot was that, you know, the florist wanted this, this floral art, she wanted a few different setups, and she was just like, where do I put it all? And it was very much up to us to decide what part of the day we were shooting all day, what part of the day, what direction, and we could do any direction we wanted. And we even shot this floral arch at, at two different times of the day. We shot it th at this time and then a little later on. And it just showed to me the amazing difference of how things can look um, depending on the lighting and depending on the angle of lighting. And something that I use in order to kind of figure all this out is an app called TPE. I think there's a few different ones of them. It's an app that shows you where the sun is going to be at a certain time of day. And that enables you to figure out like, okay, will this be in sun? Will this should be in shade? Like what time of the day do I need to shoot different things at? And as a photographer, that is an absolute must um, so that you can even give your clients some ideas of like, 
oh, maybe you guys shouldn't stand there during the reception. Maybe it should be this way. This is where we should take a couple photos um, because you'll know where the perfect lighting is at the perfect time of day. This is for the same florist on the same day that we did this branding shoot. And we shot a variety of her floral bouquets. And something that I wanted was just something a little different. Like I wanted some interest. I wanted some interested, interesting lighting. And going back to how important lighting is and how important it is to kind of play with different lighting, this speckled lighting was just under a tree. And so we were shooting these bouquets in a different area and I just like wanted something like, I don't know, different. And so we took all of our stuff over and moved it all towards under these trees where it gave us that beautiful light. Um, you can even see a little bit on the bottom where I haven't cropped it in yet. You can see blades of grass. Like this is literally sitting in a thing of grass underneath a tree. And that's how I got such a beautiful lighting. Drone photos. This is something that I've been doing for a couple years now and I love it. Um, this particular wedding, it was kind of on this like peninsula in this private kind of estate area. And I was just like the first time I walked down there, I was like, oh my goodness, I need this. I need a big shot of this whole beautiful area uh, with a bride coming down. And that's difficult to do. Um, and especially when you want it like kind of elevated so you can fully appreciate everything that's going on in the scene. And so what I did was I use a drone and some questions that I've gotten from people is like, well, are, do you, are you there like taking the photos? No. So what I do is actually put the drone up just before the ceremony starts and let it sit there. And I actually let it take video the whole time. And then I take a screen capture from that and that's the photo. Now, is this the like the highest resolution photo ever? No. Is it a pretty high resolution and pretty decent? Absolutely. Um, there are scenarios where I have an assistant that's able to, you know, man the drone and like take full photos whenever I need to. And that's really great. But in a scenario where maybe you're on your own, you don't have an extra person, but you still want to get that great shot, hitting record on a video and let it record the whole time, taking a screenshot after is kind of a sneaky way to be able to get that extra production value uh, with maybe just being on your own. Okay, this is not a wedding photo, but guys, I became a father for the first time this year and this little baby girl, this was one of the first photos that I took of her when we came home from the hospital. And I got to say, it's by far my favorite photo. So I, I just had to share that with you. I'm sorry. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting, gave you some ideas that you can implement in your own wedding photography. Um, if there's some videos that you would love to see me make for you, if you have some questions, let me know in the comments what those are. If you're a photographer yourself and you would like some resources, some things to help you, um, I've already started with a preset that you can purchase on my website. You can find the link below. And I am looking to adding some more things in the coming weeks and months. One of those things is a mentorship. If you'd like some one-on-one -on -one help with your photography, I will announce that when that's coming up, but just wanted to give you a little bit of preview is that there are some exciting things coming to give you some help and support if you are a wedding photographer yourself.